Guys, I have a confession to make, okay? I don't even want to look you guys in the eye right now. I, I told you that I was I was over this deck. I told you that I wouldn't play it anymore, but I'm back. We're back on Dynamorphia, baby. And today, I'm going to be showing you guys a Dynamorphia deck list to be competitive in the December 2023 format. I'm going to be honest, I played this deck for so long. I saw a lot of success with it, and I think this deck can still be powerful and competitive in today's format. And in today's video, I built a deck list that I think actually is very powerful and can win you a lot of games. So with that being said, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Thank you guys for watching and thank you guys for supporting the channel. With that though, let's get right into the deck profile. So to get things started off, of course, we are playing three Dynamorphia Theresia, the best normal summon of the deck, the best name in the deck. You need to be playing three Theresia, but I'm also choosing to play three Diplos. Now, the reason I'm choosing to play three Diplos is actually because I don't want to run out of names. This deck does grind a lot, and sometimes you lose the name or not having the extra name can kind of be detrimental. So I do like playing the third Diplos. And on top of that, both of them have floating effects. So while Diplos is kind of like a brick in hand, you don't really want to draw it. It is one of those cards where at least you can kind of sit on it. It gives you a name on the field, which lets you activate some of your trap cards. And then on top of that, it can float as well as the Theresia. So they kind of get themselves into each other in the mid to late game, which is nice. So I really like playing three and three. I wouldn't change it up just because I think Diplos, again, is one of those cards that I play at two for so long. But I just feel like since I've been playing the deck, I, I noticed that the third Diplos does come up a lot. So I do like three and three, especially in a build like this one. There are other builds where you kind of focus more on pushing for damage. With this one, it's more of a control build. So I think the third Diplos is very important. Then, of course, we are playing three Frenzy as well as three Domain. These are, of course, the most important traps in the deck you need to be playing three and three because this gets you into your extra deck it gets you to your fusion monsters and that is the win condition of the deck so you need to be playing three domain three frenzy i don't think this is arguable another card that i like to play three of and i feel like some people like to play two but i like to play three is three intact intact is a solemn strike all you need to do is control a dynamorphia card and so the really powerful thing with something like intact is you can activate frenzy right and the thing that this deck loses to the most is ash because if i go frenzy i have to pay half my life points for cost and if this gets ash you're kind of in a bad position but because this is now face up you control a face up dynamorphia card which means that if you activate frenzy and your opponent goes ash you can actually activate intact to negate the ash which is really nice and on top of that that's kind of where the diplos the third one comes in handy where if you have kind of quote unquote brick hands or more hand traps in your hand rather than the dynamorphia cards you can have diplos on the field with an intact and at least that's another form of disruption for you as well right so that's why i like playing the three intact i think it's so powerful and another card that i'm choosing to play at two now rather than one is alert so i'm actually choosing to play two alert for a couple reasons i was playing one alert one sonic you can also play Brute as well. I don't personally like Brute or Sonic myself just because you have to get rid of a Dynamorphia monster you control and having to get rid of a Rexstrom or one of your extra deck cards kind of sucks. Yes, you can get rid of Diplos or Theresia, but honestly, I don't like that condition. Alert, the reason I like playing two is because if your Rexstrom does get sent to the graveyard, Alert can just summon back the Rexstrom, which is really powerful. So it's kind of like a monster reborn, but it also gives you access to Diplos and Theresia when they're both in your graveyard. And when that happens, you have access to your rank four plays, which is really nice, right? So that's why I really like Double Alert. I think in the mid to late game, this becomes really powerful. Rather than playing one where you're kind of forced to search it, I like playing the two because if I do draw into one, it makes it so that I'm not afraid for my Rexstrom to get popped by a card or destroyed or someone gets over it, right? So that's why I like double alert. And that's it for the Dynamorphia engine here. You guys can see we're not playing Brute, we're not playing Sonic, and that's because you guys are going to see some of the other choices in the deck that make it so that you don't need Sonic, you don't need Brute, because the other cards are going to do those things for you without having to have other conditions met on the field. Now, moving on, we are playing two Soul of the Supreme King as well as two ferret flames now i kind of want to talk about these cards they're the most important cards or some of the most important cards in the deck because they kind of are blowouts i mean ferret flames alone is a blowout card but two soul of the supreme king i think is really powerful i've been in love with this engine since it came out just because i think it's so powerful that you can get a 4,000 beat stick on your side of the field which helps this deck in so many ways because again one of the biggest problems with this deck is being able to go for game and win right so the thing with this is it gives you access to a 4,000 beat stick but on top of that it gives you access to cards in the extra deck like crystal wing or crystal clear wing depending on the matchup where you can set up a monster negate or you can set up a spell trap negate which is really powerful and again that's another body on your side of the field they're pretty big bodies as well so they do help you otk and go for damage even if you're not otk it does just help you push for game right which is really nice also the other thing that i like about this is it pays half your life points as cost so it synergizes with all your other cards because sometimes if you just open a frenzy for example and you go frenzy into rexstrom you have 4,000 life points right so it doesn't really do much having a rexstrom with 4,000 life points 
points because then you're forced to use the rex Storm effect to get down to 2000 but then a lot of the times your opponent can still activate monster effects with less than 2000 attack so for that reason soul of the supreme king is really really powerful because it gets you down to 4000 on its own even if this gets negated it doesn't matter it now sets you up where if you activate domain you activate frenzy you're able to get down to low enough life points where your cards are going to be really really powerful speaking of that we are playing three solemn judgment as well solemn judgment of course is uh one of those cards that's just absolutely insane now of course we're playing it in the main deck not in the side deck because you always want to go first with this deck and on top of that with a card that i'm about to show you guys next you can actually get into this even if you're going second and you can actually set it on your opponent's turn which is absolutely insane so soul of the supreme king solemn judgment help you get your life points down which is important and then favorite flames is an absolute blowout card because this essentially gets rid of all monsters your opponent controls and on top of that it doesn't target the monsters it doesn't affect the monsters it affects the player so it's an important ruling if your opponent has a monster that's unaffected or cannot be targeted it does not matter this affects the player it does not affect the card and then lastly to round off our support for trap cards we are playing three wannabe wannabe is one of the most important cards in the deck it gets you to all your extra traps on an end phase not your end phase and end phase which is really powerful because even if you are going second right you can activate wannabe on your opponent's end phase and assuming your opponent has no cards in their back row even if they have one or two it doesn't matter it gets you deeper into your deck it gives you situations where you can actually hit solemn judgment on your opponent's turn so now when it passes back to you you already have a solemn judgment set so now you have a protection which is really powerful on top of that though it's not just the judgment you can get into solemn supreme king you can get into any of your dinomorphia traps you can get into a fair flames so wannabe is absolutely insane because if you're going first you can use this on your end phase to get into one of the traps if you're going second it doesn't matter because you can use this on your opponent's end phase and still get you into one of your traps which is absolutely insane so i really like three wannabe i think it's so important to be playing in this deck so now for all the non-engine cards we are playing three kosh or fenrir in a deck like this one i think fenrir is really important because this deck does lack being able to put enough damage for game and again soul of the supreme king kind of helps with that fenrir helps with that as well fenrir also helps that when you're going second it can be a board breaker for you it can be one of those cards that's really going to add another level of disruption because it just makes it so that on top of your traps you'll have that fenrir disruption as well then we are playing three ash blossom of course as well as three imperm i think these are just the best cards that you can be playing in this deck of course imperm is a trap card which is really nice with this deck but ash is also really powerful just generically so i like these six hand traps if you guys don't have access to fenrir because honestly otherwise the rest of this deck is pretty budget if you guys don't have access to fenrir and you want to make it more budget you guys can swap these out for more hand traps it doesn't really matter i think fenrir is just one of those cards that's really powerful because it does kind of help with some of the weaknesses of the deck but it doesn't matter if you guys don't have fenrir you guys can play something else another hand trap here is just as powerful and then lastly for consistency we are playing three pot of prosperity it's really nice because there's only a few cards in your extra deck that you really need so prosperity getting you into any of your traps getting you into a fenrir is really powerful and for the 40th card we're playing the called by the grave it's a card that's really good offensively and defensively and it's a really good 40th card so that rounds off the main deck it's 40 cards in the main deck for the extra deck we are playing three rexstrom three catragina as well as two stealth bridgia this is pretty standard i would say in all of the dynamorphia builds keep in mind with this kind of extra deck you guys can always pot a prosperity one and one away so it's not the end of the world that's why i like playing three and three but on top of that the third rexstrom does come up sometimes when you're in the late game and so that becomes really powerful right so i think you have to be playing these this you're never actually going to make you only ever use this for frenzy which is really nice right so these cards i think is pretty standard self-explanatory now i'm playing two zark one crystal wing and one crystal clear wing i'm not playing starving venom i'm not playing any of the xyz dragons i'm not playing the rest of them because you don't really need them you only use these cards for their effects you don't want to waste your extra deck slots on cards that don't really do anything for you and so for that reason i really want to cut it down and slim it down to the most important ones now we're playing two zark you can actually cut it to one zark and there's another card that i'm going to talk about that you guys can play in your extra deck that uh, i'm not playing currently i'll talk about that when we finish up the, the extra deck here though but i think playing two zark can be nice because you do play two solo supreme king so it can come up twice it's happened to me where it's come up twice multiple times but on top of that you can always use one for a prosperity target then we're playing the one psychic and punisher of course ash plus a rexstrom can make this and it becomes really powerful it's like an otk engine for you and an engine that you can just make where it can end on this little boss monster so your opponent can't actually beat you through this right and then we're playing the one dolka and the one logia for the alert targets when you get two level fours onto the side of the field dolka and logia become really powerful now real quick i want to talk about two cards that you guys can be playing in your extra deck that i'm not currently playing in my extra deck one is chaos angel you guys might have noticed that wannabe is a level two light combo that with a level 8 rexstrom you can use that and the rexstrom to make a chaos angel and because chaos angel doesn't actually need a tuner it becomes really nice because rexstrom is a dark which means you're going to get the dark and the light effect for chaos angel i just don't have one so i'm not playing one but chaos angel is a very powerful card that can come up and then the other card that i'm not playing is baron de floor you guys can cut maybe a logia for the baron de floor baron is really good with the ash and the fenrir now the reason i'm not playing baron is actually not because of accessibility not because like with the chaos angel i just don't have one but uh with the baron even if you guys do have one the reason i'm not choosing to play baron is because i feel like a 
a lot of the time you'd rather just have the Fenrir on the board. Baron can be really powerful, but I don't really want to use a Fenrir plus an Ash, which is essentially two disruptions for a single Baron disruption, if that makes sense, right? So that's why I'm choosing not to play Baron, but it's another option for you guys. Lastly, I want to show you guys a side deck, but keep in mind, side deck is always going to be up to personal preference, and it's also going to be up to what your local scene is like. If your local scene is all combo players, make sure you side for combo. If your local scene is all back row players, make sure you side for back row, right? But here we are playing three Gamma Seal. I think Gamma Seal is really good into the purely matchup and into any of those matchups where your opponent puts up a boss monster that's not really easily outed. Gamma Seal does that for you. And then you have the Harpies and two Lightning Storm for back row matchups. Also for back row matchups, as well as like Rescue Ace and whatnot, three evenly mash. Again, you're not really OTKing with this deck anyway, so you don't care about losing your battle phase. If you're able to blow out your opponent with an evenly mash, it's really, really powerful. So I really do like evenly mash. Again, a lot of these here are like blowout cards, right? And then we are playing three goes in match. If you guys didn't notice, everything in the main deck other than the Fenrir really is dark. So for that reason, I think goes in match becomes really powerful because a lot, a lot of decks can actually play through a goes in match. It becomes really nice because this is a good going first card, but it's also good going second because if you set this going second, pass it back to your opponent, activate this. As long as this doesn't get negated, it actually breaks a lot of boards. So it's kind of like a board breaker for you. And then lastly, I'm playing three D barrier against certain matchups. D barrier is just another blowout card, right? Against Pendulum, against Centurion, against those kind of decks. D barrier is kind of just blow. Out. And I just like having all these blowout cards over here to just auto win you a lot of games. So that is it for today's video. Thank you guys all for watching. That is my take on Dino Morphia for the December 2023 format. I think this deck is still very powerful, still very underrated, and it can do a lot of very powerful things. Now, if you guys did enjoy today's video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We are uploading every single day in the month of December, so make sure you guys are subscribed to stay tuned into all of that. I appreciate every single one of you, and with that, Spanko signing out. Peace.